Lay down behind me is the expo floor at VMworld 2014. Obviously this is where you can go see the new products, the new announcements, be inundated and sold to. Before I hand this summary video over to my colleagues to give their individual views on individual parts and aspects of the conference, what I just want to cover is not so much what was on the expo floor, but what we heard in the general sessions, because to me this was one of the most interesting aspects of this particular event. There were new announcements, of course, lots of talk about hyperconvergence and hybrid clouds, but the thing that struck me as really interesting was the tone of this conference, which was distinctly different from what we've heard before. Rather than lots of bits and bytes and details about the products, and that was in there, but it was definitely subsumed to a higher level message about bravery, new frontiers and so on for VMware and its ecosystem. I think this is both trying to get people, users that is, to follow VMware where they're going, of course, but I also think it represents the fact that where VMware was the new frontier a decade ago, five years ago, it's kind of become standard and so it's trying to re-establish its avant-garde nature and the fact that it represents the new frontier of technology. That's what this show was about. Let's hear from my colleagues. So I've been looking for data protection news all week long and there certainly has not been a lack of it. The major theme is around enabling the virtualization admin. Now we see things like Commvault, who now has new pricing specifically for the virtualization scenario instead of the entire Sympana suite. We see EMC announcing Recover Point for VMs, where again it's the V admin who's now managing that stored synchronization as opposed to the storage administrator. Cronus has new technologies. In fact, a lot of folks are talking about how can they enable the virtualization admin. One of the tough spots has actually been finding out what VMware is doing. They mentioned that the Cloud Suite 5.8 is coming, but there weren't a whole lot of details from an executive point of view, and you had to dig a little bit to find out there's some really cool stuff coming in the 5.8 release later this year. But the key point to take away is, if the virtualization admin is going to be empowered to do their own kind of data protection, their own data restore, the backup administrator needs to be part of that solution as well to make sure that all the data retains the compliance and protection mandates that the company demands, even if the V admin is the one who's actually invoking the process itself. Hi, I'm here at my ninth VMworld. And one of the biggest things that came out of this event is really its announcement around VMware Evo, and specifically Evo Rail and Evo Rack. This is an integrated computing platform, a converged infrastructure approach that VMware is now introduced to the market. And essentially what Evo is, is a recipe that they provide its hardware partners with that can deliver a converged infrastructure to market. Evo includes a recipe with vSphere, vSAN, Log Insights, and its own UI that's wrapped around the hardware to provide a very simple, easy to deploy platform. VMware customers have a lot to benefit from Evo. It really allows them to take workloads, test and dev, VDI, for example, deploy it very quick, and still take a VMware proven recipe into their environment. There's a lot of things in motion here for partners at VMware 2014, and I'm not just talking about the Trembler up in Napa on Saturday night. Uh, with the recent announcements, uh, in particular, the, uh, the ones from VMware about the um, hyper-converged infrastructure and the Evo Rail announcements, um, have significant impact on how partners are going to be looking at their partnerships and their planning and strategy going forward. Solution providers are uh, concerned about their relationships with existing hyper-converged partners like uh, Nutanix and Simplivity, and also about their relationships and uh, the growing influence of tier one vendors, and frankly, what it means for their line cards. But most importantly, the partners that I talk to are concerned about what the impact is going to be on their ability to deliver the high value services around infrastructure that not only drive their profitability, but also are key hallmarks of how they uh, differentiate themselves versus their competitors. At the end of the show, I think that um, partners walk away with, frankly, more questions than they have answers, not the least of which is not when, but how they transform their businesses to the new consumption model. I am here at VMworld, and amidst all the excitement and the myriad of announcements, one thing really stood out, and that was their one platform for any app strategy. 
One of the things that I really find interesting about it is how VMware is integrating both OpenStack APIs and Docker containers in their VMworld, or their VMware suite. What's really fascinating about this is it wasn't too long ago that folks were looking at all the hype and all the excitement around open source technologies as a looming threat for VMware. And with this one move, by not only integrating the APIs, but also creating their own OpenStack distribution, VMware has turned what was a competitive threat into a strength. And with this, not only does it expand their technology, but the reach of their capabilities. That's it for this year. We hope you enjoyed this. It's been a fascinating event as usual. I think what's interesting is, you know, you look around the show floor once you get away from the, uh, the sessions, and yes, it's VMworld, but it's a mix of the, it's a whole ecosystem because it's every big vendor. It's also like VC world down there because it's every small vendor too. Everyone's in this, it's an ecosystem. It's fascinating to see where it develops over the next few years. Mm -hmm.